who to trust, how to make your significant other happy and have a saltwater aquarium, and the one piece of saltwater aquarium gear we think you should buy first. Hey everybody, Matthew here from My First Fish Tank in collaboration with Marine Depot, and welcome to week seven of the beginner how-to guide for saltwater aquariums and reef tanks, 15 tips before you buy your gear. For a lot more information about this video, be sure to check out our blog. I'll put a link up here and in the description below. And of course, if you miss videos one through six, I will put a link up here as well as a link to each of the videos below. Be sure to check out and stay with us every single Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific. You can watch the videos at Marine Depot or at My First Fish Tank. And without further ado, let's jump right in to our 15 tips before you buy your gear. Tip number one, read the reviews. And don't just read the reviews from one place. Go to all sorts of different online vendors, talk with friends, watch YouTube videos, go to forums, and really have a sense of if an item's going to be worth it, especially for the more expensive items. If you're just buying some sort of off-brand thing, it's not as important, but if you're gonna spend some big money, be sure to read the reviews so you know what you're getting into. And the key thing about reading reviews is don't trust one source. A lot of saltwater aquarium products won't have a lot of reviews. So if you go to a Marine Depot and you see two reviews and one of them's bad, don't necessarily trust that. Ask some other hobbyists, go to some other websites, and really do your research. Tip number two, keep it simple. You're not an expert. I'm, I'm not an expert. I've been doing this for years and I am not an expert. And I have found over time that beginners like to overcomplicate it because just like any hobby, you wanna be an expert right away, but you're not an expert. So the best thing you can do is to start out simply and realize that this is going to take you a long time to become an expert in. So when I say, Keep it simple, don't go for the most complex gear, the most complex dosing methods, the fanciest things out there. Follow our techniques and follow our future videos when we give you build lists because we will start out with simple gear that will be effective but that will work. Tip number three, formulate realistic goals. This can be challenging, especially if your only experience before has been keeping some sort of goldfish in a bowl. Saltwater aquarium livestock can be very, very tricky. So having a realistic goal is important. So for example, maybe an initial goal would be to have a 20 to 40 gallon system with a couple fish and a couple easy to keep corals. Don't start out planning necessarily the biggest tank with only difficult and finicky fish, high need corals, non-photosynthetic corals with all sorts of filtration gear because all you're gonna do is you're gonna overcomplicate things for yourself. So set a goal that is gonna be simple and that's gonna be achievable and then you can move on from there. Tip number four, be patient. This hobby, no joke, will teach you patience or it will destroy your patience and you will quit. There's really only two options. Patience is essential in this hobby. But let's just take corals as an example. Some corals will take years, years, to grow a few inches. And if you're not patient, you're gonna lose your mind. Some issues in your tank, like nuisance algaes, can take months to develop, and they can take months to get rid of. Things like dinoflagellates can kill off your livestock, and it can take you a very, very long time. My tank, right over here had a dinoflagellate problem. And when I started out in the hobby, I rushed it and I wanted to get rid of those dinoflagellates quickly. And when I not only failed, but caused more problems, I quit. I have finally defeated dinoflagellates in that tank, but it took me three to four months. So I, I really can't stress this enough. In this hobby, good things take time and bad things can happen instantaneously. So before you rush out and do something, take a breath, ask some fellow hobbyists, watch some videos, read some articles, and just go slowly. Tip number five, allow yourself to fail. You will fail in this hobby, guaranteed. I guarantee it, you are going to fail in this hobby. But the only way you're ultimately going to fail is if you quit. I have done this for years now and I share my experiences with you guys in my Tuesday gallery videos and for years in other videos. And sometimes people say, Matthew, you should just give up. You know, you're not good at that. And I always tell them, no. So tip number five is allow yourself to fail. Know that you're not gonna be successful with every fish 
or every coral. Know that you're going to experience things in your tank that you've never seen before. You're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. You're going to have good months and you're going to have bad months. And don't expect to always have success. Even seasoned professionals don't always have success. But if you take each failure for what it is as a learning experiment, then the next time you experience that same issue, you're going to be better off. So yes, allow yourself to fail. Number six, get excited. I mean, look, look. I have a whole fish room. I mean, dream big. When I started out in this hobby six, seven years ago, did I ever dream that I'd be doing this full time and making a living, making videos and making blogs? No, I didn't. But get excited because you have no idea where this hobby is going to leave. It's a challenging, challenging hobby, but it's also a super rewarding hobby. So allow yourself to get excited. And yeah, you're going to experience setbacks, but don't let that overshadow your excitement and your reason for getting into this hobby in the first place. Tip number seven, I got to be with you guys. Tip number seven, involve your significant other. Now, if you don't have a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a partner, a spouse, you don't have to worry about this. You can go out and spend as much money as you want and do whatever you want. But if you have a significant other, someone you care about, I'm going to give you some relationship advice because I have seen, I'm not joking, I have seen relationships end because of an obsession with this hobby. So when I say include your significant other, I mean it. Talk to them about what you're planning on doing. Get them to share in your excitement. Talk about the budgeting. Don't pretend that it's not an expensive hobby. Develop a plan for buying things piece by piece. The more you involve your significant other, the more chance you're going to have to be able to coexist with a happy relationship with your significant other and saltwater aquariums. Look at me now. My wife has given me our entire living room, our entire living room. And if I hadn't involved her from the beginning, this would have never been possible. So yes, I know you probably don't want to hear relationship advice from my first fish tank, but I have seen relationships fail because of this hobby. Tip number eight, buy an RODI filter. Buy an RODI filter before you buy anything else. And I know there are people out there, and there's probably a lot of you out there who don't own an RODI filter. You think it's too expensive, you don't want to figure out how the thing works, but I promise you, if you make an RODI filter one of your first purchases and watch the videos and learn how to use it properly, it is going to save you a ton of money and a ton of time. I have never once had to go to buy distilled water at the grocery store. I've never once had to go to my local fish store to buy salt water. You can purchase your RODI filter and make your own salt. And what, 200 gallons of salt water can cost you $65? That's way less than 50 cents a gallon when they charge a dollar at your local fish store. So I know it may seem daunting up first, but I highly, highly recommend that the first purchase you make is an RODI filter because that is a purchase that will take you through your entire life in this hobby. Tip number nine, and we're going to talk about this a lot in a later video, set up a quarantine tank. It's just best practice. And if you don't set up a quarantine tank near the beginning of this hobby, you probably never will until you experience some sort of massive failure. If you talk to people who have done this hobby for a long time, most of them will say, yeah, I should have built a quarantine tank. I didn't do it at the beginning. And you may wonder, why do I need a quarantine tank? Because here's what's going to happen in this hobby without a quarantine tank. You're going to go along, you're going to have successes, you're going to have failures, and your tank may, after a year, after two years, be stable and happy. And you're going to think, hey, you know what? It's time for me to buy that tank. Hey, you know what? It's time for me to buy that Antheus. And you're going to go out and you're going to buy it and you're going to bring it home. And within a couple weeks, there's going to be an ick outbreak and half of your fish, if not all of your fish, are going to be dead. You will not have to spend a lot of money on a quarantine tank, and it is an initial investment that will pay dividends long run. Tip number 10, you don't need fancy gear. You need the right gear. Now, if you're independently wealthy and money's not a thing for you, sure, go right ahead. Go buy your fancy gear. But let's just take lighting as an example. A $1,000 light is not necessarily going to grow your coral any better than a $200 light. A $500 return pump is not going to necessarily more efficiently pump your water than a $150 return pump. There are things you're going to want to spend money on, and then there are things you're not going to want to spend money on in this hobby. And don't get sucked in to this belief 
that buying the most expensive option is the best option. You could build a 20 gallon tank and spend $1,000, or you could build a 20 gallon tank and spend $300 and find just as much success. So you don't need to buy expensive equipment. You just need the right equipment for what your goals are. Tip number 11, spend more money on the things you're going to see. This is something that I wish hobbyists had told me at the beginning. What am I talking about? There are pieces of equipment that you're gonna have to look at every day. For example, you're gonna have to look at your tank, you're gonna have to look at your lights, and you're gonna have to look at your rock. So if you're looking at two kinds of rock for your aquarium, and one of them is an ugly kind of looking rock, but it saves you a lot of money, and one is a beautiful red coralline color rock, but it's a lot more expensive. If you're gonna spend money on one thing, go with the more expensive rock. And the reason I say that is because you're gonna be staring at those rocks every single day. If you're gonna spend more money on a light, let's say $300 on a light, but you can get a cheaper, uglier light for $150 that might work just as well. For the light, I'd say go with the $300, not because it's gonna work better, because it's more aesthetically pleasing. Because so many of us get into this hobby because it's beautiful. So if you're gonna spend more money, then consider spending a little bit more money on the things you're gonna to have to look at every day. Tip number 12, buy a piece of gear with each paycheck. Don't think that you have to go out and spend a ton of money all at once. And if you were like me when I started this hobby, I knew that saving up a little bit of money and then buying everything at once wasn't a good option because I couldn't see the results and I would forget about it or I would spend that money on something else. So what I did is I bought a piece of equipment with each paycheck and then I put it in my living room right where it was supposed to go and I would just fill it up over time. Yeah, it took me six months to be able to purchase all the equipment I needed, but my excitement built as I bought each piece of equipment and I was still able to pay all of my bills and make my significant other happy because I wasn't spending a ton all at once. If you don't have a lot of money, just buy a piece of gear with each paycheck and build it slowly over time. Tip number 13, buy the tank you're gonna want in a year. Now this isn't like a hard and fast tip, but if you know that your ultimate goal is to have like a 75 gallon cube because there's certain livestock you wanna put in it, but you only have the money right now to buy a 20 gallon, well, rather than spend your money on that 20 gallon tank, because you know what's gonna happen is you're gonna get rid of that tank, no one's gonna buy it, it's gonna be a huge hassle and you're gonna waste a ton of money. Just wait a little bit longer, save up a little bit more money and buy the tank you know you're gonna want. If you don't know what you're gonna want, then please by all means don't save up for something that you don't know if you're gonna need it because then you're gonna spend a lot more money. Just go with something smaller that's less expensive. But if you have your heart set on something, then buy the tank you know you're going to want and not the one you can afford right now. Tip number 14, buy an extra heater, an extra utility pump, and a battery powered air stone. This is just called building in redundancy because what's gonna happen is something's gonna go wrong. And if your lights go out, and you can't get them to work anymore, that's not a big deal. Your livestock can survive several days with no lights. But if your heater goes out in the winter, or if your return pump goes out, your fish can die in 12 hours, either from temperature changes or from suffocation. Do yourself a favor, buy an extra heater, buy a utility pump, something that you can just put into your tank in case your return pump goes out to at least keep it aerated and buy a battery powered air stone in case of an electrical outage. That way you can at least aerate your tank in the short term. And finally, tip number 15, don't blow your budget up front. Write down everything you're gonna need. Make a list, write down all the gear you're gonna want, how much it's gonna cost, total all up, Take that number and then double it because that's how much it's actually going to cost. And why I'm saying don't blow your budget up front because the initial setup costs, while it may be a lot of money, your costs over a year are also significant. So if you blow your entire budget up front, you're not gonna have any money left over to buy the little things here and there that you're gonna need in your first year. Okay, so we've given you all of these tips before buying your gear, so what gear should you buy? Well, tune in next week for week 
eight because we're going to talk about build lists, choosing your gear, and give you our recommended builds. If you want to browse some of our recommendations now, just go to myfirstfishtank.com, click on build list, and you can browse all sorts of build options from low budget to high end tanks. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to My First Fish Tank and to Marine Depot. And as always, happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next week. Take care, everybody.